Okay, welcome back. If you just joined us, you're watching Business Incorporated on Channels Television. Now, there's been a number of developments in Nigeria's forex markets recently. Officials of the Department of State Services raided the offices of some bureau de change operators in Lagos and arrested operators selling above the stipulated exchange rate of 385 naira per dollar. There have also been rumors that the central bank plans to arrest those alleged to be holding dollars. Let's get some clarifications on these issues. Isaac Okurafo is the Director of Corporate Communications at the Central Bank of Nigeria and joins us on the program. Good afternoon, Mr. Isaac. Good afternoon, Bolagi. Thank you for your time. Now, can you clear the air on these issues, especially on the allegation that the central bank may be arresting those uh, that are holding foreign currencies, especially the dollar? Yeah, uh, Bolaji, um, it is not true that um, the Central Bank of Nigeria is, uh, is uh, working with security agents to arrest um, legitimate bureau de change operators. No. What the security agencies are doing is just their job. They are trying to deal with those people in those miscreants who are illegitimately, illegally operating as bureau de change operators. Licensed bureau de change operators are free to, to, to go on, the, on their business. They will not be arrested once they are licensed and they are operating legally. That is all. That's what we see the security agencies doing, just their job. Now, it's also important to correct one impression, that one story that is have, having its way around that the CBN intends to jail people found in possession of uh, dollars. It is not true. We are not, we are not seeking any legal uh, legislative amendments to arrest people in possession of their legitimate, legitimate dollars. And we are actually not contemplating anything like that. Even, even people have, uh, there was also an allegation that we, we tend to confiscate people's money in dollars in their domestic accounts. That is not true. People are free to use their, their dollars in their domestic accounts that they have legally acquired. And so please, Nigerians should disregard those two stories. Once again, the CBM is not contemplating jailing people who are found having their legitimate dollars in their possession. It is not true. So how would you assess the efforts that the central bank is actually making to ensure that uh, there is enough forex for those who are demanding them? Many people would argue that uh, they cannot access forex uh, going, going to their banks and so would we'll resort to going to these BDCs. Bologi, we we all know that we are passing through a period of acute scarcity of dollars. That understood. We, what we have adopted, the strategy we have adopted at the CBN has been to ensure that we prioritize what imports that we bring in, what imports we spend the scarce dollars upon. On. And we have told Nigerians that we are directing banks to sell 60% of what they get from the interbank market to manufacturers, and we have kept to that promise. We very soon, beginning by, from tomorrow, from tomorrow we are going to publish every bit of what has gone into spare parts, raw materials, plant and machinery to manufacturers. And Nigerians are free, manufacturers are free to re go through this list. Once they notice any discrepancy in their names, if they didn't receive the dollars, they should call us at the CBN and we will take action. We, are, we have already released for the month of September $660 million for that purpose to manufacturers. And we are publishing it to, to make the entire process very transparent so that nobody will be shortchanged by any middle, uh, middle man at all. Some of some manufacturers, so, so other people in other sectors of the economy would say that they've been marginalized when it comes to getting forex from the central bank. They feel that uh, you're paying attention to just some few parts of the economy. Bolaji, you see, when, when you are faced with difficulties 
in obtaining dollars or foreign exchange, you have to sit down and, and ask yourself, which sector will stimulate growth and create jobs? That is what we need at this time. And so we have taken that decision. All sectors get something. But then we have to be reasonable. We have to allocate and ensure that the market allocates enough, or not, not just enough, at least a substantial part of what we have, to those sectors that will create jobs and also grow the economy, especially now that we are in recession. I think that is the most reasonable thing to do. We are sorry that we can't meet everybody's demand. We can't meet, we can no longer, of course, we can no longer meet the, uh, the um, foreign exchange demand for importation of rice and all those other things. But then we are trying our best within the available resources that, uh, that, that we have. Thank you so much, uh, Isaac Okura, for Director of Corporate Communications at the Central Bank of Nigeria. And Botswana says it has changed its consumer price index base year to 2016 from 2006 and modified how it calculates inflation to factor in changes in consumption patterns. The changes are expected to be factored into the October CPI figures that will be released later in the week. Uh, we're seeing that uh, new products in the CPI basket included tablets, USB flash drives, and second-hand cars uh, will also be considered. Rebasing and the change of weightings and products would not have a significant statistical impact. Botswana's annual consumer inflation was 2.8% in September. And finally on the program, Algeria will be facing, uh, is actually facing financial difficulties from the fall of oil prices and the country has raised 568 billion diners, that's an equivalent of $5.2 billion from a local bond issue aimed at helping offset low energy revenues. According to the finance ministry, the African Development Bank earlier in the month approved a 900 million euro loan for Algeria, that's an equivalent of $1 billion which is aimed to support uh, domestic revenue mobilization and investment climate, as well as energy sector efficiency and promote renewable energy. It was the first foreign loan in more than a decade for the North African country, which had been spending generously before the start of a drop in crude oil prices in mid-2014. The government had said that the bond issue, the first in years, was intended for large economic investment in all sectors of the economy. With our story, we've come to the end of today's edition of Business Incorporated. Thank you so much for being a part of the program. I am Bola Giacuali.